if Cheryl had been killed and Andy was tied up first before she was killed, that means he was there to listen to her scream and cry and beg for help and there was nothing he could do about it. Lover's Lane in media is often depicted as a place of cautionary tale, which in turn is kind of ironic because essentially it is a place where young people go or couples go to find escapism and intimacy, you know, whether it's a rural area or in the middle of the woods on a road or overlooking a city in a parking lot, you know, it is a place where people go to find romance and joy. A crazy thing about that term is that it turned into one of those, you know, positive situations that ended up having later on with especially pop culture, a negative backlash towards it. And one of the prime examples of this is being because of the infamous Zodiac Killer. As we all know, the Zodiac Killer is one of the most highly infamous serial killers to ever walk this earth. And his legacy is still at large. And it is said that in 1968, the first killing he had made to kickstart this frenzy, this frantic manhunt of finding this killer had happened at a lover's lane in Benicia, California, where High school classmates David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen had been killed and targeted as his first victim. And then from there, you know, Lover's Lane kind of captivated this term that is rooted in fear as much as it is in romance. Crazy thing about Lover's Lane is that it could be anywhere. It could be from Atlanta to Texas to even the town that you live in. It is such a renowned term, you know, along the lines of the haunted house at the end of the street that you're town can't stop talking about or the haunted woods that everyone knows about and they just don't go in lovers lane ironically captivated and took hold of this kind of negative energy that has caused some alarming domino effects as i stated the zodiac killing and then many other murders have been labeled as lovers lane killings because of the area it surrounds and on this episode i want to talk about one case in particular that is pretty haunting Drip Fed Dread, a podcast where usually I talk about horror and movies and kind of social aspects of the genre, but you know, due to popular demand, I'm going to kind of deep dive into true crime stories as well, but I also want to centralize them around themes. Even if it's just a one note story, I kind of want to talk about more than just the story itself. And today the topic is Lover's Lane. And the story today that we're going to talk about has similar notes to the Zodiac Killing where it is a tragic tale of a young couple that were killed and, and to this day it is an unsolved mystery. And this is the case of Cheryl Henry and Andy Atkinson. Cheryl and Andy were a young couple living in Texas. Their infatuation with each other was one of the most heartwarming things that their families had ever seen. Cheryl had blonde hair, a bubbly personality, and piercing green eyes. And it is noted that Andy had a love for her that was undying. Inside and out, he just couldn't contain himself. When he was around her, there was so much joy. Her smile was contagious and this relationship seemed to be kind of something that everyone wanted, That's a, that people almost admired, you know? You couldn't find these two separated from each other. And it was a summer night in 1990 in Houston where Cheryl, her sister, and Andy met up at a nightclub called Bayou Mama's Nightclub. They enjoyed their night together and ultimately Andy and Cheryl decided to leave. Keep in mind, this is the 90s, so nowadays it's kind of hard to kind of have some privacy in our lives. You know, you could shut off your phone, but first you tell your friends where you're going to be, or you can, you know, try to get away, and then people kind of can figure out where you are. But in the 90s, it wasn't that easy. So this was the last night that they were seen. So when they left the club and people claimed that this was the last time that Cheryl and Andy had been seen for that night i mean no one was alarmed because you know they were probably out having a good time it's no one's business you know and unfortunately this was the last time that they would ever be seen alive that night on august 22nd cheryl and andy decided to go to a place off of enclave parkway near eldridge parkway and it was a lover's lane you know they wanted to catch up talk you know have some romance privacy just be in each other's company and unfortunately, like we hear in tragic stories, this ended up being a fatal mistake. 
The next morning when Cheryl hadn't come home, her parents were quick about the, the discomfort and decided to contact police right away. Oftentimes people jump the gun and call the cops way too soon or they wait way too long and it's way too late. So in this case, they were kind of smart to nip it in the bud as quick as they could. Around this time in the morning, a security guard for the Lover's Lane area happened to be doing a little patrol when he stumbled into a white car with a purse and shoes in it and this white car happened to be Cheryl's. The contents remaining inside were Cheryl's as well. This is where the story kind of takes a tragic turn. After having police and guard dogs search the area, they had found Cheryl's body. And it took a lot for the police to hold back Cheryl's mom in a fitted devastation of trying to rush over and see her daughter, but they didn't, you know, naturally you don't want a loved one to tamper with the crime unintentionally, you run up, Whatever you do, it kind of could make or break the case. So with heartbreaking remorse, they had to hold her back. And in recent years, it's sad too, because uh, Cheryl's mother had said if they had just let her run up to Cheryl and breathe into her, that Cheryl would come back to life. And you can say what you want about this. You could be like, ah, uh, the woman's crazy or, oh yeah, okay lady, but let people hold on to their closure and hope because as a grieving mother who's carrying this to her, this detriment on her back for nearly 20 years, I feel like she deserves that little sense of hope that she has. And whether or not it's true and she knows that she can't do much about it, being in an area, seeing your daughter dead like that is such a terrifying thing that no one should ever have to even consider. So let her feel how she wants. And at this point, I know you're thinking, where's Andy? I don't know if there was enough time in between for them to consider him a suspect or what was going on. Did Andy escape? Is Andy behind this brutal killing of his loved one? It's happened before. Or, you know, is he missing? And sadly, they didn't have too much time to marinate on this idea because inside the woods, they had found Andy dead and he was tied to a tree and decapitated. According to investigations, Cheryl had been killed first. So there are speculations that if Cheryl had been killed and Andy was tied up first before she was killed. That means he was there to listen to her scream and cry and beg for help and there was nothing he could do about it. And at the same time, knowing that the impending doom was headed his way and he just had to sit there and suffer, which is such a horrendous crime to think about. Like you're strapped to a tree, the person you love more than anything is just being brutally attacked and you just have to sit there and let it happen. Like, I, it makes you sick to the stomach to even think of it. They said that the killer had used Andy's golf clubs and golf balls that were in the car to kind of lead a path that led to the body of Cheryl, which again is kind of a sick thing to do. Like, what's the motive behind this crime at this point now? Are you trying to have this person get found? Are you trying to do, you know, what the Zodiac did and cause a pandemonium? Are you trying to get credit for this kill? Nobody knows, but they say it led them to Cheryl's body where she was naked under some wooden boards and there was a $20 bill found by her, which that could be interpreted into many things. Maybe he dropped the $20 bill, maybe it was already there, maybe it's a symbol of something, but that's just a detail I thought I would throw into the story. And Andy was killed and they weren't far apart from each other and that's just so devastating. You go to a place to have some intimate, quiet time with your loved one and a tragedy happens and it sparks the idea is this a copycat killing you know like obviously the zodiac killing had happened long before and from 1968 till now there has been many lovers lane murders and do they all stem from the same thing do sick and deranged people hear about these you know killings and get inspired by it or are some of them sheer coincidence are some of them not even lovers lane areas and they're just pegged as that because a couple was found together there's all these different variables so cheryl and andy are ultimately murdered detective billy belk would end up spending the next part of two decades trying to solve this murder where he stated this one haunted him more because you know it's the one that got away from him and i feel like oftentimes in life a huge survival tip for people is some sort of closure whether you're a cop or you're going through a bad breakup or there's just something itching the back of your neck the wrong way that you can't quite reach closure is such a huge thing for the human conscious and sometimes it drives you mad and it led him on a journey to try to solve this case for nearly 20 years he had claimed that he had nearly 25 suspects billy traveled states trying to find suspects you know he had a little bit of dna and he wanted to match that to a killer. He had around 25 suspects at least and they all ruled out 
as not being the killer. Being a detective investing into a case, he had his theories as well. He felt that they were being targeted. He said Cheryl was tied up more so than Andy was and it looked like Cheryl had put up quite a fight. So could there have been multiple suspects? According to Detective Belk, his theory is that these people had to have known who Cheryl and Andy were. Maybe it was a rendezvous meeting point where they were set up or something happened that just took a wrong turn. That the killer who did it was around the same age of the victims. He also says that the killer was highly intellectual but a low achiever, whereas they're definitely a smart and capable person that kind of, you know, in one way or another, not as, you know, praised by society as they felt like they should be. And the biggest thing about this case is that the police believed that they had interviewed this person. They had just gotten away. In 2001, years after this case, someone had written to the Houston Police Department and said they would give information that would blow this case wide open for the sum of $100,000. So was this the killer reaching out? Was it an elaborate hoax where someone thought they could get money off of a disastrous crime or was there someone out there that knew something unfortunately this did not come to fruition either and the case remained cold so in 1990 until now this murder has been unsolved and that is tragic and i know what you're thinking because oftentimes when i watch this type of content i get very dissatisfied by the fact that it is an unsolved mystery but that's what makes it more scary i'm going to try to cover more crimes in the future that have you know a happy ending, so to speak, because you know, whether or not a couple gets to live happily ever after or not, or whether or not they suffer a tragic demise and then the story is tied up together with, ju with justice and vengeance, that's a whole nother thing. But sometimes in life, you got to accept the fact that closure comes from within your heart and not necessarily from around you, and which sucks, you know? I, I feel really bad about the situation you know let's give respect to the victims what do you guys think comment down below was this a zodiac killer copycat was it just a freak accident that happened to a couple that was labeled lovers lane because it, a piece of the tabloids do you think the killer knew them i just wanted to talk about the story because it piqued my interest and i thought it was devastating and scary and unfortunate i hope someday that the killer is caught so yeah guys this is drip fed dread i am your host dylan I do horror, comedy, music, and now I'm going to be doing true crime. If you like this type of content, the best way to show it is to like it. Hit that little dingling button that harasses you saying, hey, it's me, I'm here. And subscribe, really, like, I, as cliche as it sounds, you always hear us YouTubers be like, like and subscribe, but it just shows us to keep making the content that you like. So I'm gonna say it one time, give me a hell yeah for horror. Ooh, that candle's hot.